calls are growing louder in Israel for the resignation of Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and for an election to be held. Many who were dissatisfied before the war on Gaza began are even more unhappy now with how the country is being led. So, can Netanyahu be toppled from what many say is his disastrous leadership? This is Inside Story. Hello, welcome to the program. I'm Adrian Finnegan. He's the leader of Israel's war of genocide in Gaza. He's facing increasing Israeli anger for failing to bring captives home, and he's also on trial for fraud and bribery. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is under growing pressure, both from politicians within his own government and from world leaders, increasingly uneasy at the ever-rising death toll and destruction in Gaza. He's long been a controversial leader, provoking months of mass protests last year, against his changes to weaken the powers of the Supreme Court. He's facing similar protests now, with thousands rallying nationwide on Saturday to demand early elections. Netanyahu's dismissing the demands for an election to be brought forward from their scheduled date in 2026. So, can he resist the revolt against his leadership? And is he continuing the war in Gaza to try to stay in power? We'll be mulling all of that and more with our guests in just a moment. But first, Laura Khan begins our coverage. Street confrontations between Israeli police and protesters in Tel Aviv and a rallying cry from thousands angry about how Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is conducting the war. They want him to resign. I'd like to say to the government that you had your time, you ruined everything that you can ruin. Now it's the time for the people to correct all the things, all the bad things that you have done in the past 20 years almost. Protests started at the outset of Israel's war on Gaza, with family members of captives being held there, demanding the government prioritizes their release over the military campaign. But as protests swelled, demands shifted for the country to hold early elections, not scheduled for another two years. But Prime Minister Netanyahu has not changed his stance, reiterating his mantra that the only solution is military. Our policy is to liberate and return captives through military pressure. We have brought back 120 of them so far. We will continue until all of them are released. Protests are now being backed by trade unions, powerful enough to grind the economy to a standstill if their demands are not met. On Saturday, the head of the Hisrajit Union said Netanyahu took us to the edge to a place where we should not have been. We're at a dead end and there's only one way out and that's elections. Netanyahu is also under legal pressure, on trial for fraud, bribery and breach of trust. An opinion poll from the Israeli Democracy Institute shows Netanyahu's popularity is plummeting, with only 15% of Israelis wanting him to stay in power. There's a division, too, within his own war cabinet. Rival Benny Gantz won almost twice the amount of support in the same poll. Saturday's protest, which was the largest since Israel's war on Gaza, followed months of huge demonstrations last year. Israelis marched against judicial reforms proposed by Netanyahu and its hard-right coalition. The so-called Reasonableness Standard Bill was passed in July after the opposition boycotted the vote, leading to yet more anger on the streets. However, this bill was nullified by the Supreme Court in January. Netanyahu is also facing pressure overseas. The International Court of Justice at The Hague last month ordered Israel to take immediate action to stop acts of genocide in Gaza. And months of solidarity marches for Palestinians in various cities, including London, New York and Mexico City, all demanding an immediate ceasefire and justice for Palestine. In Gaza, Israeli forces continued their killing campaign, obliterating entire neighborhoods with air and artillery strikes, leaving no escape for Palestinians and leaving many questioning whether the war is the only thing keeping an increasingly unpopular leader in power. Laura Khan for Inside Story Al Jazeera.
All right, let's bring in our guests for today's discussion from Tel Aviv. We're joined by Oren Ziv, a journalist and commentator with Plus 972 magazine. Kalansua is just 50 kilometers north of there. That's where Tabat Abu Ras joins us uh, from. He's the co-executive director of the Abraham Initiatives and a prominent advocate for the rights of Arab Israelis. And also in Tel Aviv, his political analyst and journalist, Akiva Eldar. Uh, a warm welcome to you all, gentlemen. Akiva, let's start with you. Uh, we got some idea from uh, Laura's report there, but why the calls for an early, early election? Why are people so dissatisfied with the current government? Are, the, are those calls likely to be heeded? Is the government under any obligation to bring forward the date of a general election? Uh, it's hard to uh, decide where to start, Adrian. First of all, uh, your reporter just mentioned uh, the uh, protest that started a year ago over the judicial reform. Now, uh, nobody still, until this very moment, promised us that this is over. This uh, uh, attempt to uh, actually undermine the pillars of the Israeli democracy. Number two, it's uh, very clear now to uh, most of the Israelis that Netanyahu is a burden. They believed for many years um, I think that uh, the, the uh, wake-up call uh, started uh, with his trial, with the scandals that uh, surrounded him in uh, 2018. And it seems that since then, uh, it's all about his own political freedom and political future, uh, personal freedom and political future. You know, his trial is uh, still continuing. Um, he will probably be subpoenaed, will have to testify. And uh, there are more and more Israelis who think that uh, Netanyahu has taken 10 million Israeli hostage and he's willing to undermine our relationship with the United States. He wants to gain time to wait until the American elections maybe. President Trump will, will save him. And uh, what's happening now is Netanyahu is using the uh, anxiety after October 7th over security, over uh, the need for unity. And the person who is ma a master of incitement, it's his middle name, is now bringing incitements even against the families of the Israeli captives and is dividing Israel between two camps. One camp believes that the lives of the captives is more important than anything else and Netanyahu is responsible for what happened to them in October and Netanyahu has to do everything to bring them back home. And the other camp that uh, is uh, mainly Netanyahu's fans in the media, uh, in the coalition, is inciting against those families, telling us the story that uh, they are actually undermining his attempt to a total victory, to win this war against the Hamas. So now you can see in Israel two separate camps that have very little in common. Given us a lot to, to chew over there, Akiva. Tabat Abu Ras, um, let's start with, with, with those claims that Netanyahu is continuing the war in order to, to stay in power and delay his trial uh, for fraud and bribery. How credible are, the, are those claims? And how has the war changed Israeli politics? Yes, uh, the war uh, has uh, had an impact, uh, extreme impact on the Israeli society. It's, uh, but it's still, it's a wake-up call for the Israelis to reconsider their uh, uh, political paradigm. Uh, still, the Israeli society in large in a post-trauma. You cannot believe that it's happened. Uh, after all, we are talking about the longest war, the most ex expensive war, in the same times, the most divisive war. And now uh, there is a confrontation with the international community. Israel in large, it's in a very bad shape right now. And this is why Netanyahu left with very extreme uh, right-wing, even racist uh, coalition 
uh, without the Israeli public. Uh, uh, several segments are, uh, they are not with Netanyahu, not supporting the government, yet they are supporting the, uh, the release of the hostages. So uh, the, right now, I believe that Netanyahu is uh, put in the, between the rock and the hard place. In one hand, he's, he's looking for an achievements uh, in Gaza, but this war, uh, it's, not, it's not bringing any achievements, almost any achievements in Gaza. On the other hand, we can see that the killing, the civilians, atrocities that is committed every day in Gaza, it's really bringing more international uh, pressure on Israel uh, and uh, also now from the allies, United States and European uh, countries, and also the, now the ICJ. I, 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 we have to witness that uh, we see that there is a kind of uh, pressure, internal pressure within the Israeli society is built up right now, but it's still it's, uh, it's so small. We don't see the demonstration in Tel Aviv. Uh, it's really, uh, it's far from being the, uh, to compare them with the uh, demonstration that took place prior to the 7th of October. But I believe this will build up and the, the changing, the change of political leadership in Israel is imminent. Oren Ziv, uh, he's survived many previous predictions of his downfall. If there were an election in Israel today, would you bet money on Netanyahu not being prime minister afterwards? Uh, senior members of his own party says that he won't, but you can't put anything past him, can you? Yes, exactly. I think this is exactly the reason uh, Netanyahu is aligning to the extreme right, to Ben Gvir and Smotrich, uh, because in the beginning, people thought when Gantz and more centrist uh, figures joined his government, they thought it's for Netanyahu to promote a deal that we knew that the extreme right would not support, that would include the release of uh, Palestinian political prisoners. So the family of the hostages and other members of the public had a hope that the fact that Gantz and Isaac Eisenkot are in the government could affect Netanyahu to go to this deal and to give him some support. Also, uh, Lapid announced that he would support from outside uh, this kind of deal. Uh, but now it seems that Netanyahu understands that if there's a hostages deal, the extreme right will leave the government and maybe later also uh, Benny Gantz after the deal is completed. So he decided to align uh, completely to the extreme right. Uh, talking about the fact that only military forces would release the hostages, something that hasn't proved itself in the, the last 130 days. And it's even Netanyahu is insisting not going to elections and just uh, dragging uh, the next two years with his extreme partners. On the other side, of course, we have uh, the protest. Uh, yesterday, there was the biggest uh, protest uh, so far on 10,000 people. Uh, we have to understand that the Israeli public is still in, in shock and many people felt uncomfortable to protest during war. But as they saw Netanyahu is going back to dealing with local politics and survival mode, they thought it's the time to go out, not only for the hostages, but also to demand uh, the government to resign. And as, as I see it, this, those protests will also grow. And what we're hearing from uh, sources in the police, in the Tel Aviv police, is that this time they will not allow, and we've seen it yesterday, they will not allow uh, blocking of the highway or marches and so on. So also yesterday we've seen some uh, small clashes, but as I understand the police is uh, trying to align with uh, Minister ben and and show uh, that they are loyal to him, will not allow uh, the mass uh, blockade we've seen a year ago. Akiva, um... Tabet touched upon uh, the makeup of, of Netanyahu's coalition uh, government at the moment, uh, the most right wing in Israel's history. To what extent is he being constrained right now by his uh, coalition partners in his decision making on the war? What do those parties want, especially those, those two small far right parties? Could they actually bring down the Netanyahu government if he agrees to anything that they don't like? Actually, he made a decision that. Uh... Uh, he is willing to confront the international community to say no to the president of the United States who has his own domestic challenges, as we know. And uh, just this morning, a few hours ago, he passed a resolution in the cabinet 
that is a clear message to the United States saying, mind your own business. Israel is not willing to hear about a two-state solution or a Palestinian state. Um, and what he's trying to do right now is to dictate a new kind of message to the campaign. He's actually in the campaign right now. We're talking about uh, the uh, protests in the street. He started while he's calling for unity, and this is not the time for elections, and this is time to hold hands. Um, he is telling us that he is the only one who can stop and uh, uh, undermine any attempt to force a two-state solution. And we know the paradigm that uh, President Biden has put already on the table, uh, not formally, but it's a Palestinian state, it's peace with Saudi Arabia, uh, and it comes also with a deal to release the hostages and a ceasefire in uh, Gaza. So what Netanyahu is doing, he is not willing to give a green light to the uh, deal with the, the Hamas over the hostages. He is not willing to give a deadline to uh, the war. He is refusing to put forward any exit strategy. And uh, uh, let's see what the Israeli uh, civil society will say, because he's got his uh, 64 block. The Knesset is also taken hostage by him, by the government. Uh, Gantz is in a kind of uh, catch-22. Uh, he's doomed if he stays. He's doomed if he leaves in the time of war. I, Actually, I the polls are showing I, that I'm, I'm, the vast I'm, I'm, majority of these... Akiva, I'm, I'm sorry to... I'm sorry to I'm sorry to interrupt you, Akiva, but I just you you picked up on 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 something there uh, when you said that, that Netanyahu is is refusing to make a, a decision. To what extent is that actually politically very clever in uh, by deciding uh, or by not deciding? He's actually deciding by uh, re remaining ambiguous and letting it drag on. That actually benefits him politically. Yeah, uh, it it, uh, it seems that uh, his polls are showing that. Uh, the Israelis are very concerned about the, the even the possibility that uh, there will be a Palestinian state next door in Gaza, in the West Bank, East Jerusalem. Ramadan is coming, uh, and uh, people are talking about escalation between Israelis and Palestinians. What he's doing best is playing the zero sum game. What's good for us must be bad for the Palestinian and vice versa. And this is working. So I wouldn't rush to bury him uh, if the issue will be Palestinian state or not. And Gantz uh, and even Lapid are numb about it. He, they didn't say that they support the uh, uh, blueprint of uh, President Biden because it's not popular, Palestinian state. And Netanyahu is putting himself, he did it with Iran, and you know how he ended, but he uh, has a very good record in uh, destroying any hope for even negotiations on a two-state solution. Uh, Tabat Abbas, picking up on, on what Akiva was saying there, uh, when he was quoting uh, Netanyahu speaking on, on Saturday, the last thing we need like, right now is elections. We need uh, unity right now. If there's one thing Hamas would like, it's a political fight which would further divide Israelis. He said Israel will not agree to Hamas's terms for a ceasefire and hostage swap. He called them insane. But does the Israeli electorate agree with him? Well, you know, it's very important just to focus on the issue that the Israeli society as a whole, Israeli political uh, map, doesn't have a clear vision. They have several challenges. A challenge of lack of leadership in Israel. Uh, and second challenge, the, the peace vision. I believe that Israel doesn't have a clear strategy regarding the Palestinian people and what to do with the territories. Uh, accept to manage the conflict and to try to change reality on the ground. And uh, even if we change Netanyahu, and I believe that 2024 will, 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 will be an election, a national election, and the, the 
I believe that Gantz will be the leader of the, the, the coming leader actually to replace Netanyahu. However, Gantz will build a, a unity a coalition that consists of the Likud party, the Haredic uh, party, Haredic Orthodox parties, right wing and left wing, because the Israeli society as a whole need needs a, a, a unity. The, the issue of unity is so important for Israeli. So the I believe that uh, what we need really a vision for peace. I think Israel should rush to join the international community and to try to offer a hope for the Israelis, not only for the Palestinians, mm. and to go for a real uh, peace with the Palestinians. It's now or never. I believe that is, uh, the survival of the state of Israel depends on peace and leaving aside Jewish supremacy in, uh, out of the region, okay? So uh, in Israeli conduct, actually, should be more respectful to the Palestinian, to the Arab uh, issues, and should return to the Saudi uh, initiatives, peace initiatives. This is the right thing to do. Okay. Unfortunately, there is no real leadership in Israel that can adopt the Saudi, Saudi peace initiative right now, even if the government support that. Just before I put that to Oren, Tabat, briefly tell us how powerful a lobby uh, the Arab-Israeli vote is. Uh, uh, voters are there in Israel. Yes, I think it's very powerful. We are consist of 20% of the total population, and we can. We are in favor of political partnership. We would like to, uh, uh, to be part of the uh, political uh, uh, process in Israel. And uh, nobody can benefit from peace between our country, Israel, and our people, the Palestinians, more than us. I believe that we are paying a, a double price, being Israelis, Israeli citizens, and being Palestinians. In, during the last few, uh, uh, actually, months during the war, we, uh, we were silenced by the Israeli uh, system, and we are, were interrogated. So this is why we would like to be part of any anti-Netanyahu government. We would like to be part to overthrow the current government. Yet, we are really concerned about the future government. Hopefully, it will be a peaceful government that will go for peace and make peace with our people, the Palestinians. All right, picking up on what Tabat Abaras was saying there, that the survival of Israel uh, depends upon peace. Is that something that, that the, the Israeli electorate would agree with? So... Unfortunately, the vast majority of the public supports the war. Uh, a lot of them consume only Israeli media, so they're not really aware of the horrific reality in Gaza, the casualty, the devastation, the, the, all the Gaza Strip that is destroyed, literally destroyed. I do think that if there is some hope is the fact that uh, the protesters we saw yesterday in the street, and they're not against the war, they're against the government, some of them are talking about uh, the lack of uh, speaking about the day after. Netanyahu refuses, and his coalition refused totally to speak about the day after what will happen. And so in, inside the protesters against the government, you have a small group uh, that has of radical le left-wing Israelis, uh, Jewish Israelis, who've been protesting since they won against the war, against the genocide, against the massacre. And maybe a connected point between this small group and the a vast majority of the protesters that are calling for election against Netanyahu is this idea that Netanyahu and his coalition refuse to take talk about the day after. And, and, and the public, even the left-wing uh, centrist uh, public who come to this demonstration, even if they don't openly oppose the war, they do understand uh, that there has to be some solution, some diplomatic or po political solution that Netanyahu and his coalition are refusing to speak about, and this might give some hope for a political change. Uh, Akiva, we've got just a few minutes left. What will post-Netanyahu politics in Israel look like? Will there, do you think, be radical change uh, after this war and everything that the country ha has been through, or will it be more of the same, led by different faces? Actually, uh, Adrian, it's very easy. Just uh, look at... Uh the uh, political map and uh, the Israeli policy uh, on the regarding the uh, conflict, Palestinian-Israeli conflict, the year before, headed by Bennett and uh, Lapid, uh, the Israeli 
public, I think, is more mature than uh, the leaders. As uh, Tabet just uh, said, I think that uh, the mass majority of the Israelis understand that we must reach an end to the conflict and end of war. How many more wars can we handle? Uh, but uh, even if you look at uh, the possibility of a government led by guns, on his right, there are people who bypass Netanyahu from the right, like uh, Gidon Saab, who were part of the Likud and the radical part of the Likud. So uh, I, I believe that the Israeli peace camp and the Palestinian peace camp, both in Israel and in the occupied territories, will have to work very hard to make a, a difference. It's not just changing the leadership, it's changing the priorities, the agenda, and the, the uh, moral of the Israelis. Uh, Tabet, I, I've got about two minutes left. I need a very brief answer for you because I want to hear a, a, a little bit more from Oren too. Uh, you, were, you were nodding vigorously there. Yeah, well, I, I, I second the Akiba, I agree with Akiba, but still I think we need international uh, help. Without international help, I don't want to use the word impose, but I think uh, to pressure Israel to try to obey the, first of all, the international law, it's so important to stop this uh, uh, messy war, uh, killing civilians every day, and uh, also to try to come up with a, a, a solution, peace solution that that based on the establishment of the Palestinian independent and sovereign state alongside Israel. I know that Netanyahu is in a battle of survival, but he will lose everything. Oren, very briefly, a final word from you. Are, are, these, are these protests, you think, set to grow in the coming weeks? Definitely, they're going to grow. They're going to get bigger. As, as we've seen in the past, they're going to meet with police brutality, uh, police repression, and this will encourage more people uh, to go out and, and join them, and hopefully also to relate to the war itself and not only to the elections and uh, against Netanyahu. There, gentlemen, I'm afraid we must end it. Many thanks indeed to you all for taking part today. Oren Ziv, Tabat Abu Ras and uh, Akiva Eldar. Thank you for watching. You can see the programme again at any time by going to the website. It's at aljazeera.com. For further discussion, you're welcome to join us at our Facebook page. You'll find that at facebook.com forward slash AJ Inside Story. And, of course, you can join the conversation on X. Our handle there, at AJ Inside Story. From me, Adrian Finnegan, and the team here in Doha, thanks for watching. We'll see you again. Bye for now.